Thank you guys for coming to today's session. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of cool techniques about using AI to make it easier to find photos. So I'm glad you guys can make it. My name is Rich Harrington. Let me just start by uh, sharing my screen here. And uh, I'll start to just jump right in and walk you through things. So again, thanks guys for checking this out. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a specific product, but also teaching you about how AI and computer vision works when it comes to finding content and some strategies to really stay organized. I think you'll like this. So again, I'm glad you guys can make it. Please feel free to put any questions you have into the Q&A section or the chat. Uh, happy to interact with you and to walk you guys through how things work. So welcome to the Visual Storytelling Conference. My name is Rich Harrington, and uh, we're going to talk about finding and organizing photos using AI. And in order for AI to work, there's a couple ways it can actually do this. One is by recognizing information that's already embedded in our photos. Usually this is through metadata that comes from the camera or information that we add ourselves or through computer vision, which is where the images are analyzed and the computer can make attempts at deciding what's there. So I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff that's recently come out and walk you through how to use it. Uh, the software that I'm going to show you today has both a paid and a free version. The free version is totally works with all the AI stuff I'm showing you. So you have absolutely no reasons not to try it out. And uh, it'll let you use all these AI search tools as well as AI tags 100% free. Okay. All right. We're going to jump right in. And uh, thank you guys for coming. My name is Rich Harrington. And uh, I'm going to be showing you Milio Photos version 23 and how to use AI search and AI tagging. Uh, I work on the product team for Mylia Photos. I'm also an educator and a photographer. Uh, I'm sure some of you may have seen some of my tutorials through the years or books that I've written, but I actually helped design this software and I'm really excited by what it can do. So we're taking a look at Mylia Photos. Mylia Photos is a free application and it helps you organize and search for photos. There is also a paid version, a plan and an upgrade called Mylia Photos Plus that adds backup and device syncing so you can take everything with you when you travel. Okay, so uh, Miley Photos makes it really easy to browse and enjoy a very large photo library. I'm working at home right now and I've got about half a million images online and I'm going to show you. And what I mean by online is I don't mean in the cloud, I mean just plugged in on a hard drive and I'm going to be working with them. Miley Photos works with everything locally. It can work with the cloud if you choose to, but it also keeps everything private and runs on local storage. So this makes it really fast to do AI searches. And you also can add information about people, events, or locations that all becomes searchable. And then this information also becomes embeddable. So it's pretty cool. And this just really makes it easy to pull it all together. And again, what I'm showing you is available in the free application. So you don't even have to buy anything to take advantage of what we're going to walk through. Okay, so the first stage is you got to get everything in and I'll explain how this works real quickly. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to pull everything into Mylio Photos and you don't have to move it around. So it's really simple. Uh, you can go ahead on your device and install it on Mac or Windows or on a phone. It also works on tablets. And then the free version of the software will work with any direct attached storage. So you can plug in any hard drive and add that. You can import from memory cards. You can import from cameras. You can also import from social media like Facebook, Flickr. Uh, there's new support for Frame.io for Camera to Cloud and Frame.io projects that just got added. And also um, Instagram and Google Photos. So you can bring all that in. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm just going to switch over here. And uh, I'm using the paid version of Milio, which is why I have all these devices here and up and running. For example, you'll see like if I turn my phone on and launch the phone application, once it connects to the network and it sees it, the devices can communicate and it's going to download the one missing photo that this phone needs. So that's the way that this works. You're able to actually connect multiple devices and have things start to share. So it just works over networking. It's pretty straightforward and uh, easy enough. So you can see here that I've got a lot of different devices all connected into one network. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump in here. Let me just switch views and I'm gonna go over to the all photos view. There we go. And my all photos view has all of my images in it. 
Now, in this case, I got a lot of different stuff. I've got scans. I've got old pictures that I'm starting to organize that need information. I've got my Instagram library, just about you name it, video, photos, HDR, brackets, they're all here. I got a lot of time-lapse shoots. This is from when I shot the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game, for example. And I wanna show you how all of this information is pretty straightforward. Now, to bring stuff into Mylio Photos is a piece of cake. You just click the plus button and add media from this device. Navigate to a folder that you want to import. You know, for example, I can go here to my main disk grade and choose a, a folder and just grab something here. I'm not going to actually bring it in, but I'll show you. And I'll click open. It scans it. And then if you don't want to move things, change it or copy it, just link it. So you can use any storage you already have. You just link to it and then Mylio Photos will start to index it. Or like any other digital asset manager, you can copy them off a memory card or move them in. Uh, you'll also see that you can add from online services. So Facebook, Instagram, Frame.io, Google Photos, or Flickr. They each have their own instructions. Just click on it, uh, and then you can log right into your account, and it will start to download. So for example, I'll say allow, and it connects, and it's going to pull my Instagram content in, and I could just copy it at that time and it will start to import. So it's really pretty straightforward. I'm just going over how to import because you can't analyze and find things if it's not in the program. This isn't the sexy part or the fun part, but it's the easy part of just get your stuff in. And uh, lastly, if you're a Mac user, you can actually import from your iCloud Apple Photos account, or if you have any other libraries left over, things from Aperture or iPhoto, uh, you can go ahead and click and it will scan and you can go find those and it will bring those in as well. So you can really bring in from a wide range of places. Okay, if you guys have any questions, just let me know, put them into the Q&A or the chat, we'll tackle them there. But I think that should make sense. We just bring everything in and we're able to find that content. Okay, let me just scroll, go down here where there's some text. Okay, so additionally, besides bringing everything in, like we walk through there, uh, Malia photos can work with scanners, old photos, etc. And as we talked about, just click a button and you can pull from Facebook, Flickr, or Instagram, uh, new Frame.io connection, and it'll support Google Takeout. So you can grab any of those things that you've ever posted to your Google account. Now, I'll just put this up. If you guys want to take advantage of the pro plan later, this will let you save half off. But again, the free version of Malia photos works just fine. What I want to show you now is how AI works to find things. So a couple things to think about. With any photo, we're going to have metadata. So metadata becomes searchable and is something that we index. So for example, I'm going to just go here under folder view and locate some stuff that I recently shot. So I start typing and I see here that I have my trip to Taiwan. So, you know, all the folders are searchable. This isn't AI, it's just a quick folder tree. But I wanna show you a typical photo and some of the information that is indexable within that photo. So when I was out shooting pictures here, uh, I was using, for the most part, two cameras, my iPhone and my Fujifilm X-H2S. Now, what's really cool about that is that I had my Fujifilm X-H2S paired to my smartphone. So most camera manufacturers these days give you a mobile app that you can pair with your mirrorless or your DSLR camera. And you totally 100% want to do this because what it does is it creates a data connection between your smartphone and your real camera. <laughs> so I consider the iPhone a real camera too, but I also love uh, the extra control I have. And in this case, wonderful low light capabilities when I was working on the X-H2. Now, in this case, it also captured information about that picture. So first off, uh, you'll notice up here that I've got a little icon indicating that there's details here about the geo location. This is one of the most invaluable things you can inject into a picture. Here's why. So first off, you're going to see that it includes information about it. So for example, we got an exact location on a map of where I was. 
Well, that's useful because we can go in all the way down to the street level and kind of know exactly where we were, right? So I'm seeing here where I was for that shoot. I've got a straight up zip code address, basic information, and I can see a little bit more detail there on the map. I can kind of get an idea what's going on. And if we go into the pure metadata of the image, you're going to discover that there was extra information. First off, the date was set by a satellite clock. That's really useful because your cell phone puts a truly accurate date stamp in. That's going to make it easier to find. You also see that most cameras will convey information about all the details so we can search on this. And this makes it easy for us to really dig in and find that metadata, which will help us know more about the file. And as we go in here, you'll also see that we've got information like GPS details. GPS, again, incredibly useful. So if I click on this, besides the ability to see this on a map, I can click and take a look at this on the web. So what Mylio Photos will do is creates a reverse lookup that takes you to where you took the photo. So here, it took me right into the street level. I was actually standing right here when I took this picture. And so if I ever wanted to go make this photo again, or I wanted to study more about the environment or the lighting, I could do so. Uh, this helps me kind of know where I was at because I've got that GPS data embedded in my camera. Again, not bad, pretty useful. Now, as we look at this here, this helps me understand sort of what's going on. And depending upon what we do, you might actually have Google Street View here, and you can drop on into that location. So, you know, here we are, we'll zoom in, click, and I'll just go to Street View. And I kind of get an idea of where I was. And so here is that look. And if I was just over just a little bit, you could see there is the restaurant currently closed in this shot and if we zoom out a little bit there is the taipei 101 tower that i ended up photographing in taiwan now this is kind of cool because we can get information about everything that's here and so by using one piece of information we could do a search but now let me show you how if you didn't have that information you could still surprisingly do a pretty accurate search one of the things we're putting into Mylio Photos that we're still finishing up, but it's coming along nicely, is the ability to do a visual image search where we can recognize the content of the photograph based on landmarks. So what's really cool is Google has made a database of about 200,000 worldwide landmarks available. And then software companies like ours can actually take that information and use it to analyze specifically where a photo was taken, even without GPS data. Now, this will be ready a little bit later this year, but you can still access this data pretty simply. What I'm going to do is just export a photo here really quick. And I'm just going to put an image out. JPEG's fine, nice and simple. And it doesn't need to be particularly large, just enough for the, the search application. And I'll just export that there. And I'll just call it to search. There we go. Now, whether you like Google or if you don't like Google, use Bing, both of them actually have a pretty cool image search that you can use. So if you go to uh, Google Images or you go to Bing uh, and you can log in, you just have to sign in in order to access it, you can actually do an image search, uh, which works nicely. So I'm going to click search by image and upload a file. So what you can do now is grab the picture that you made of something, if you're not sure what it is or where it is, and upload it. It'll think, it'll analyze, and then it'll run it against a database of everything else that's out there. And as you can see here, it didn't do bad. I mean, this is a pretty famous building. And I got to admit, you know, like I did my research before I traveled. I was like, oh, that's a cool picture. I'm like, I want to go make that picture. It wasn't that hard to figure out where to go. We got turn by turn directions right to this place. So I can go in and look up this landmark and then find out more information about a particular image, which is really cool. So this type of searching works well. And then you could dig in a little bit and find out more about what's actually there. So in this case, that took us right to the restaurant or I could do a Google search 
and dig in a little bit and you see I got back to that same piece of information, which is cool. Now, if you're in Mylio, it doesn't matter at this point, you'll be able to do that same type of searching a lot of times because here, sure, I could recognize the building, but it's pretty hard to know where the picture was taken. But with that embedded GPS data, when we explore the location on the web, we can actually go in and determine where we were. And so that works quite nicely because then we can actually get in and go down to the level of kind of knowing the actual location. So in this case, I see that we were near some of here. And with a little bit of experimentation, I can kind of dig in and start looking. And what I found was a hotel that had a great view of that building. So using embedded GPS data, you can do all sorts of great searches and then start to extract that. Now, let's go to a pure AI search for a moment. I want to point out some of the things that are happening here. Here, you see that it determined a couple basic properties, right? Sky, cloudy. That's easy. Uh, if we go back to some of those other photos earlier here, building, color, dark, person, place, right? It actually picked up that there were some people in the frame, right? It saw people. It saw that there was a building. So we are able to kind of go through and learn, and it sees what's in the picture. And by doing so, it attempts to analyze what's there. Now, what's happening with each of these scores is something interesting. The computer is telling us how likely it is something. So I wanna show you how computer vision works under the hood, not looking at the software, but like what actually is seen by the computer or the analysis. So when you pour images into Mylio Photos, what we end up doing is we index all of that content that is there and we attempt to understand what's happening in a photo. So in this case, we're doing object recognition. Uh, we'll be doing other models as well here soon. We're working on things like sports objects, as well as like being able to look at a team roster and find people. Uh, we also look at things like visual properties, exposure, smiles, eyes open, eyes closed, dark, bright. Uh, and the difference here between Mylio Photos and other tools, and it's different because as a photographer, I wanted more control. And so I challenged the team to be different. So let me show you, for example, uh, what other tools do first. And then I think it'll be interesting to show you how this is different. So if we launch a tool like, you know, just a, a real struggling startup of a company, how about Apple Photos, right? You know, clearly their resources are limited when it comes to AI and technology and software development. And that's called sarcasm, but if it's early or really late where you are, I'm sure Apple could do better than this, but they're not right now. So let's type in something like cat and I'll hit return. Well, it found 87 photos, right? And it found some moments, but what it did was you're looking at this, you're like, I don't get it. What does this have to do with cat? Sure, it found cat on text and it found a keyword called cat but then it also served up cathedrals and all of these different buildings that I visited. And it just kind of mixes them all together. Well, that's not tremendously useful, right? We want to be much more specific when we do a search. And so, sure, search for adult cat. Okay. Dog, child, cat, 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 dog, cat, bug dog dog cat that's not great <laughs> let me know in the chat if you found that useful for that type of search i don't think this is a very useful search so this is why a lot of people write off ai searching let me show you what we did and it was very deliberate and on purpose so we made a couple of cool changes first up we put everything into a tree now, this is our first iteration of this technology, so we're expanding these, but we put about a thousand objects, a little more than a thousand things in the first gen that we shipped a couple of weeks ago. And I can go under categories like animal and see cat. This way, it's not misunderstanding me. It didn't go, oh, cat, cathedral, catch, caterpillar. It's like, no, animal, cat. 
super specific. Computers are dumb. If you give them bad instructions, they give you bad results. So it's really important that we're accurate. So here we have what's referred to as a hierarchical keyword, where we've created a structure that says cat, but in the context of animal, and those things have to connect. So if I click on the word cat, it's going to look through my library and attempt to find cats. Let's just clear out all our filters here, and we're going to go up to the top level view where I see all of my images. In this case, I'm looking at 451,000 photos. This is my photo library that I've built up over the years. And this photo library is currently a distributed photo library, and nothing I'm doing is in the cloud. So why is it distributed? Well, it's from my iPhone, my iPad, my Android. It's from my Mac laptop, my main Mac studio that I'm logged in on, my studio laptop, my PC machine, and my second PC machine at work, and all of these hard drives. Mylio Photos Plus lets you connect all your devices into one network. Mylio Photos, the free version, lets you work with anything that you have on a computer and any direct attached storage. So you guys can decide what's right for you. So let's go into that tree. And I'm just going to search for the word cat. And I'll choose smart tag animal cat. Jumps me there and applies it. Now, I have more photos here than the Apple Photos library, but it did pretty good. That's because we hand tuned this. Now you're seeing lots of different types of cats. Well, what's happening under the hood? We're going to talk about that, but I'm going to show you here something. If I click the gear icon, I could set this to the default sensitivity. This is a key thing in AI that's usually missing. So with that lower sensitivity, oh, this picture pops in because there are cats in this photo, but they're really small. They're cats on the screen that this couple is looking at. Still cats, but is it? And then a giraffe pops up because it has similar spots to some of the other things. So you see, this is where the scoring comes in. So let's talk about that scoring for a moment. So what happens under the hood is this with computer vision. It takes a look at the objects in a scene and then scores it. So we have software, we run this on our servers, not with your images, with very large databases of images. Images we've licensed, images from users who've decided to submit them and ask us to tag them, lots of different sources. And we go through and we analyze an image and attempt to identify what's in it as well as what's not in it. So on the right here, overwhelmingly, lots of bokeh, shallow depth of field. It's purple, right? And then some negative tags. Hey, we don't see animals or vehicles or mountains or buildings or trees, right? It kind of narrows it down. On the right, same thing, or the left, same thing. No animals. And it's not so sure if it's cloudy, right? Are these clouds? Is that northern lights? But it's pretty sure that it's a lake. And 64% sure that it's a hill. And that there might be some trees. And a 96.5% chance that there's sky in this photo. 97% chance that there's water, but 62% sure it's a lake. This is computer vision. I hope this makes sense. Computers are looking at pictures and trying to decide what's in them without any human intervention besides the AI training. I don't go through and manually tag these. It just attempts to find it. So, for example, I'm going to click on this threshold score here and say, show me lots of matches. Be super tolerant of what's a cat. And now when we push that out, you know, we start seeing things like, is that a cat? No, it's a fat rabbit, but it's got eyes and whiskers and it's furry with paws and the ears are pulled back. See, that's a low confidence score cat, right? Animal, but it wasn't tagged with cat because it didn't meet the threshold for cat. But if I lower that tolerance, it goes, well, maybe it's a cat, right? And so as you see here, it starts to find things that it thinks are cats. And now we have some cartoon cats from a Disney ride in Tokyo, right? Oh, the cartoon tiger shows up. Uh, a bat shows up, but it's not sure, right? Cat or bat. So that's a low score. 
But if we increase it and say, you know what, be more particular, and I click apply, now we narrow the results back down and we get much more accurate results. Does this make sense to everybody? Let me know what your thoughts are in the chat if this kind of searching is helpful because I love this because it's completely effort free, right? With just a click here, I get Egyptian cat animal cat right it's recognizing here animal cat cougar mountain didn't have to do anything now what i like is these tags are not automatically added to my metadata there's a danger with ai analysis tools most ai analysis tools pretty much just go oh yeah and then it stuffs keywords into your files that's great because those keywords are searchable but it's not great if it's wrong so what I can do here is I could select all these and say, yeah, those are all mountain lions. And if I click, and by the way, this did come from Apple Photos and it didn't find it. I could say, yeah, that's an animal and a cat and a cougar. And there are mountains there and it is mountainous. Now, all of those have become real IPTC keywords. It'll still show up when I run smart tags but those have been promoted to actual keywords that every other application can see and use, which is pretty cool. This is that idea of computer vision to find things. What's also nice is we can really drill down and get granular. So since we're gonna give equal time to the classic cat and dog argument, let's go to dog. Now we're finding shots of dogs or what it thinks are dogs. And again, we could be more or less confident, but what I like is we have specific breeds so now with a click i can get to beagles and using the confidence slider here i can change my results definitely a beagle maybe a beagle why is this maybe a beagle well the colors are off right it's been color graded or maybe the dog's head is buried stealing food it sees a dog butt and the colors, but it's not sure, or the picture is kind of blurry, or it's just part of the beagle. Beagle spots, beagle sized legs, but where's the head? So you see how the confidence score comes into play here? AI computer vision is really useful, but only when you can fine tune it, because it's up to you. Now, before you say, well, those aren't all perfect, think of it here. I went from 451,000 photos to about 30. That's amazing to do in one click because what it meant was I was able to find things very quickly and get right to them. Now, let me show you why this is useful. First up, I've got the word beagle here. I'm going to pin that so it stays in the search bar. And then I'm going to come up and type in another one. I'm just gonna type in my daughter's name because AI was used for face detection and recognition. I click. And so now I've got shots of my daughter with her beagle and it's able to find those photos. Again, from a very large library. So this is really powerful because it makes it simple to get to what you want. So I'm gonna switch from AI tags for a moment. We're gonna come back to them but I wanna talk about face tags for a second. So face tags work in a people type view. And what happens is that the computer can scan and it will find shots of people. So here it's gone through and found me. Initially, what'll happen is, is you will scan your photos and it will say, hey, these 10 shots look to be the same person, who is it? And you tell them. And then it'll find some more, who's this? And then you'll tell them. And in my case, I identified myself as a baby and as a younger child and as an adult, and it's pretty much filled it in. So as I review this here, there's always the chance that one of these shots might not be me. There's me pretty blurry, still found me. Me, me, me. It's not about me, but this screen is. Um, me, 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 me. These are all good matches. This was just taken three days ago when my son and I went to see uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, right? So it thinks that that's me, correct. This is Miles Morales, also known as the Amazing Spider-Man from Brooklyn. 
he's not going into my photo library. <laughs> I like him, great movie, but I don't want to track photos of Miles Morales because he doesn't matter to me in the context of my family history. Over here, it's like, hey, is this Michael Harrington? That's my son. Yeah, correct. It thought that this was most likely my Michael. So I click and it found it, right? That's how that works. So now what I could do is just bulk tag and say, yeah, these were all me, approve. And I can come over here and review and say, no, that's not a face. <laughs> Sometimes it's wrong, but yep, that's all my wife. Great. That's my aunt. That's my mother-in-law. That's my mom. That's my grandpa. That's my father-in-law, right? That's my stepmom. You see how easy that is? And so once you've found people, it'll keep finding them. Now, what's really cool about that is the power of search that you get. So now, and the full search UI isn't done yet. We're making a pretty cool tool for this, but just watch. Colleen and Bucket. My daughter playing at the beach. Colleen and Swing. My daughter playing on swings. Not a single thing in here was manually tagged. AI did all of this. All I had to do was confirm the faces a couple of times and it's finding things. So whether you're doing this for professional search results or anything else, it's really quite useful because this is a very powerful way to find things. Now, let me show you how all of this comes together. So besides the ability to recognize objects and besides the ability to recognize people, we can also recognize text. So what Mylio Photos does is it has OCR search. This means it can read the text inside the photos, whether those are PDF documents like release forms, release notes, location releases, uh, scripts, things from your projects, or if they are uh, photos that are actually in the text. It scans through and it can find it. And I'll show you what the new search UI looks like in a moment. But let me show you just regular OCR. So I can come in here and type in the word Todd. And it found Todd, who was in my wedding party. Let me go ahead and uh, just rotate that around, right? There's my wedding program a long time ago, still happily married. Here's this amazing art that I saw walking by Adobe Max. Uh, I was out uh, going to get a drink with some friends. There was this gallery that was closed, but this just made me smile. And uh, I captured it and, you know, congratulations, Todd, good sense of humor, but it read that text here. It's identifying different types of things in the photograph and it found apparently the word Todd on some of the text here, here, let's go ahead and uh, ignore that face tag, but this is my son, but look, it read the word Todd on the Jumbotron for the Band-Aid Thumb War Wrestling at one of the recent uh, Star Wars celebrations that my family like to go to because we're nerds or geeks, depending upon how you prefer it. Uh, here, it read the text right here on the plaque. So if you're capturing photographic evidence or a journalist or a private investigator or a researcher, all those words on that photograph were actually indexed, which is crazy. And to give you an idea, like here's Japan, right? It's actually reading text made in Japan. Here, I just took a piece of a, a photograph of the artwork at the Berlin Photo Week. I love this piece, right? Actually, this is WPPI, this one. There it is, Japan. Gosh, <laughs> somewhere on one of these signs, it says Japan, uh, made in Japan, probably. And here, another busy street, it read Japan on the street sign, right? This is insane that it's actually able to read this sort of stuff. And so it's reading the word Japan right there, right? So it's amazing how much metadata is hidden inside of our photos that isn't actually metadata, right? So you can go in and start to locate things. All right, I took a picture at this thing. It's reading hand-painted street signs here, right? All of that became readable. Yes, that's my son, let's tag him, right? So it's finding all of this content, right? Where in here is the word Japan? 
wow, back there on the map, it actually read it. Or here on the label of this made in Japan. So OCR is incredibly powerful because a lot of times we have digital signage or real signage or books or text. And all of that can be also invoked in a search. Now I talk about this being invoked in a search. Right now in Mylio Photos, all the results are thrown together, but you can actually do advanced strings. We have instructions on our website on how to do a specific search for just text and search for that. Uh, soon we will be rolling out an approved search interface uh, like this, where you'll be able to type in something and do a search and it will then find all of that and lump them together so you could tell if it's the text or if it was the file names or if it was object recognition that was suggesting it so it'll make it easier to find things a little bit more because your search results will be parsed into different buckets so that's something that we're working on that's pretty cool okay all right let me do another couple of things here and put these together so what i really like is that you can combine things into recipes so I can say, hey, you know what? Let me do a combo filter here because I'm looking to find something. So I'm going to come to file type and say, hey, I'm looking for video files. Instantly, my library filters down to just video. Oh, you know what? I'm looking for some green screen footage. Let me just type in green and, you know, I'm analyzing that. Let's do visual properties green. Click. And now using that slider, I could say, hey, it doesn't need to have as many pieces of green in it, but it needs a decent amount of green. And I can go to more matches. Or I can click and say, you know, green screen footage is a lot of green. So let's have fewer matches. And now, pretty simply, we can go through and it's like I'm finding dive footage. I'm finding all this overwhelming footage where things are green and I can get into there. So this is gonna make it easy to find things. So let's just set that back to the default real quick. And I'll zoom a little bit. And notice what I'm able to do here is really narrow things down based upon what I want to find. And thanks to the threshold slider there, there we go, I could see more or less results with a click. So it will update the search results and then give us a little bit more so let's just do more matches there we go now what i like here is you can actually save these search results so once you put a combination together you could find things so for example i did this combination must be shot on a fujifilm camera and have sky in it okay so let me just make sure that i'm up here at the top level there we go and we'll clear that out for a second. Oh, I know why we updated the words. That's why. Let me do that one again. So I'm going to type in Fujifilm and say it must have been shot on a Fujifilm camera. One click. There's all my Fujifilm pictures. Great. I could even go by a specific camera model if I wanted. And then I'm going to type in the word sky. And I'll say, oh, smart tag, sky. And now what it's going to do is parse through everything and actually find pictures that I shot on a particular brand of camera where there was sky in it, making it really easy to start to narrow down. Next, and I mean my next is in a couple of weeks, we're shipping another filter for metadata where you can actually set a range, a focal range. So you can say, oh, I'm looking for everything between a 28 and a 50 millimeter, or I'm looking for ultra wide and you can actually set the adjustments. You could show by ISO, by shutter speed, all of those are searchable properties, so it's kind of cool. All right, I see I got a question here, so let me pop that up. Is there a way to teach Miley to find photos of a specific object? So um, what we do is we need about 500 to 5,000 photos uh, in order to train it. So you can tell it to, you could train it to find particular faces locally, but uh, you, if you're asking for visually similar photos, we're also working on that. That'll be the ability to select one photo and say, go find things that look like this. And that'll work if we don't have a smart tag. So we are doing a visual similarity index. Uh, that's something we're working on for the end of the year, Mel. Uh, Mel or Maya, I can't tell. I think Mel. So we should have that out uh, a little later this year. 
and that's visual similarity searching. But we do have the ability to also use this AI to help us get to things closer. So let me clear this out. Let's say I was doing a search for something in particular. So I'm going to do a search and say, you know, I went on a trip and I know that I went to Germany, but I don't remember when. Well, what I could do is come on over to the map and I could just start typing in a person's name. Because I remember we went to Germany and I saw some amazing things when I went to Berlin and I was with my wife, but I don't remember when it was. And I don't remember what folder it was in. So that way, I'll just zoom out here and here's all the pictures I've traveled and places I've gone around the world with my wife. I'm gonna zoom in and I see Germany. Oh, Frankfurt, Berlin. Well, let's go to Berlin. And what I did here now is I'm able to see all those pictures. Now what I'll do is clear out the filter and I'll just say, okay, don't just show me pictures of her in Berlin, but I'll click and say, show me everything for this photo from the same date. So I'll go to the calendar. And now there's all the pictures I took that day in Berlin. Oh, September 2nd, let's go up a level. And I could look, oh, Berlin Photo Week. There it is, I, it was on my calendar. I've synced my calendar for events to Milio, and it just looked at my calendar and said, hey, you were in Berlin here. There was Berlin Photo Week, right? Oh, well, I was actually there for a couple of days ahead of time uh, touring and seeing things. So, you know, I can select that event there and edit it and say, you know, that was actually longer. Uh, that went from August 29th to that end date. So let me just go here and say August 29th, save. And I'll extend that just a little bit there because we were there two more days, save. So now if I click on that, I've got an event called Berlin Photo Week. And with just a click, all the pictures from that time range pour in. And so now I'm seeing everything from that trip. So from museums to places we went, restaurants, everything else, and everything was searchable, right? If I wanna say, oh, I've got these search results here, that's cool. Um, let me just see things that were, let's come down here to file types. Panoramas, it looked at the aspect ratio and found two panoramas I captured of the Berlin Wall, right? I wanted to find those. I remember I had them, I just didn't remember where they were. Or maybe I wanna see things that were longer exposures. Well, that's gonna be based on time. Uh, soon we'll have the ability to search on shutter speed. Oh, just show me things captured with the selfie camera, right? So you can go in and actually start to search this way, it's pretty cool or only show me raw files, not stuff I shot on my phone. So this makes it simple to actually find things and really dig in, which is pretty cool. So this is gonna give you that lot of flexibility. And remember, everything is searchable. So if I were to just, instead of doing this search and I just remembered, oh, I went to Berlin Photo Week, I could just type in the word Berlin. And look, oh, there was Berlin Photo Week three years earlier. There's other ones it found, right? Oh, it read Berlin here on my wristband from the conference. It's really crazy what OCR can do. And I love using OCR because in all these cases from the airports to the crazy shirt that I'm actually still wearing today, right? There it is, it's green. So that's the uh, ample man. It's just, I'm on a green screen, but that's this symbol here. And it found stuff by searching for the word Berlin. So it's really cool how all these dots can get connected together, making it possible to search for stuff. So let me put all those pieces together. What I like about Mylia Photos is first off, all your photos can exist in a single library. You can pull everything together and very quickly, I'm going through half a million photos. It's not scanning and searching each time. Rather, when you imported, the photo on import is analyzed. The text in the photo is read. Faces are identified. Computer vision for recognition recognizes objects and finds those. GPS tags are interpreted and mapped back to locations. And if you have a calendar, it looks at the calendar and also tries to connect it to things that you've already imported. So you can sync with a Google or an iCloud calendar. So all that becomes available. 
you then have the ability with those smart tags to do some pretty amazing searches, right? So I could just come in here and, you know, oh, let me go to the drink category, right? Find shots of espresso. Yep, that's espresso. Show me cups. Yep, there's teacups I photographed. And I go, wait, I know I had more than those. Well, what's really cool here is you can say, oh, well, just take me to that whole folder. Show me that in the folder. And now it'll take you to a particular location and you can start to find the entire folder of events and now I'm looking at everything that I photographed on that trip to China. I didn't have to remember which hard drive it was on or where I had stored it. It just took me right to that location. So one thought leads to a bunch more because this is how the human mind works. You'll remember certain pieces of information. So when you have a universal photo library with everything in one folder, it's much easier to find things. When you can then connect your calendar to it, you can then start to synchronize and actually find things, which is cool. You can look on a map and see where you were when you took pictures or apply filters to see who was there with you. You can look by person and that really makes it easy to organize and start to find things. And so all of these things are interconnected into a single searchable library, which can be really quite helpful. All right, so let me just kind of walk you through. Uh, so we talked about OCR search, and that is the reading of the text in your photos works really well. Uh, as I shared with you, we're going to be updating the search page here soon, which will make it simpler to find those results. And so when you type, it will then generate a search and it will first pull photos that match, show you people that match what you're searching for, uh, folders, specific places, locations on a map. Uh, events on your calendar, and text in the photos themselves, which is really helpful. Uh, I'm going to skip touch-based culling for a moment. That's just uh, basically, we have a tool, I'll just show you super fast. Uh, on your mobile phone or any of your devices, you can actually go in and just enter quick review mode, swipe left or right to flag or reject pictures, swipe left to leave it behind, right to keep, or drag up and down to rate. It's a great way to really process a shoot quickly. We have that AI computer vision, which analyzes the photo and its contents and lets you find things. And so we can find and locate based on things about people, visual properties like color and exposure and focus and other things related to sky and such. Okay, uh, Mark, it will work with videos, but currently only on the first frame of video. So is it'll go off of the first frame. Um, so that's going to get something we improve into the future, but right now we are reading frames. Uh, we are looking at ways of doing more than that, but here, you know, a lot of this was footage. I searched for the color blue plus green plus ocean, and I found scuba and snorkeling and diving footage pretty quickly. So it was as if you put the question at the perfect time, Mark. <laughs> so thank you. It does work with videos. And so that makes it easy to find things. And you have the ability to sort by date, sort by file type, sort by lens, color, camera, location, person. All of these things let you filter it down. So this year plus last year plus panorama equals all these shots in my photo library, right? And you, of course, have all the traditional stuff. Keywords, Mylio has categories, so you can assign to like a folder and say, this is work, this is personal, this is a special project. Uh, flag stars and ratings it's all there so pretty straightforward and so then you know you actually see all of that information and when you do a search it's searching through all of these details as it tries to find things and we will be adding that related images section soon uh, that's going to give you that ability to really go in and uh, see more let me just jump forward I'm not sure why it's doing that um, sorry for the glitch but that's going to let you go in and so categories uh, people who are in the pictures, uh, you're going to be able to go in and organize things by, you know, of course, albums and everything else. And so what I'm showing you here is what we're building the rest of this year. We're building out all the tools on the right hand side. And the one that I'm really excited about, uh, besides syncing to your calendar, is the one that you guys were asking about earlier, related images. So you'll be able to take a photo and it will find other pictures in your library that make sense. But let me show you how crazy this is again, right? Remember, 
let me just switch back here. We can do really awesome things. So right now, you know, I can say, oh, you know, I'm trying to find that soccer player. I remember, you know, we, we interviewed him and I could just start to type or I could say, oh, you know, look for soccer. And as you dig in, okay, there it is. Oh, what was his name again? And I'll just come in here and look. It's like, okay, who do we got? We've got, oh, Stuart. Okay, who else do we have in the game here? And, you know, okay, Olivero, right? So let's try that. Let's do a search for Olivero. If I spelled it correctly. Yep, found the shot of him, right? That simple. Let's, you know, so this is going to make that possible for you to locate. And so because you have that text search, it's really cool. So if you had like, folder full of footage and games and everything else, right? And you could remember, or you have a player roster, right? Greenfield, great. Looks like he's in the game a lot. Let's type in his name. It found all those shots of Greenfield. Found them on the field, running, right? All these different things. This is insane, guys. As, um, as, much, as, I love OC as much as I love computer vision, I gotta tell you, OCR is killer because you could search for numbers, jerseys, handwriting, sports players' names on the back. It's all there, and it just makes it super simple. All right, I hope you guys like some of these tools uh, and what they can do for you. Uh, let me explain to you uh, what this looks like here really quick. I'm not sure why this is stuck in a loop. Let me see if I can get that to go past this little bit here. Come on. I'm trying to get it to go to the next slide. But uh, remember, you can download this for free from Milio.com, and uh, I'm going to pop up a discount code uh, if you guys want it. It's just Milio.com slash VSC, and what that will do is take you, uh, give you a 50% discount on the first year of Milio if you want the version that keeps everything syncing between all of your devices. Keynote is being weird. I'm going to try to skip forward here one more time. Hopefully, it'll work. Hold on. There it is. Good. So here's some of the new panels that are coming and uh, easy enough. Let's go past that. Once you've made your recipes, you can save your own quick collections, which are those recipes. So they're easy to reuse. And so a quick collection of Colleen by the water, green screen footage, color green footage, right? Makes it really simple. So if you guys want to check that out, you can head over to mylio.com slash VSC. I appreciate you guys coming out for the session. And uh, I'll stay around for just a couple more minutes. Looks like we got about five minutes left, although uh, the next classes are coming up as well. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I am happy to uh, help out. And again, thank you guys so much for coming to today's class. I hope you enjoyed learning about how you can actually use AI uh, to do some pretty cool things. Thanks, guys, very much. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat pod or the Q&A, and uh, we'll tackle them. Again, everything I showed you with search, all of those selection tools, 100% free. So go check those out. You have no reason not to. Uh, and it completely works with your existing photo library. And then it has the ability to hand off to any other editing tool. So it's a piece of cake. Uh, you can go to any other editing tool that you need to very quickly. So it'll just hand off to those editing apps and uh, it's that simple. So you guys can go ahead and actually send it uh, to any other editing tool with just a click. So it uh, makes it really easy and it works with Photoshop, Luminar, Lightroom, Radiant Photo, doesn't matter. Uh, any photo editing app, you can just click a button and send the picture there if you want to do advanced editing. Cool. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. We're all wrapped up. If you guys have any other questions, just throw them into the chat or the Q&A, and I'll do my best to answer them. By the way, the same stuff I showed you does work on iOS and Android, so you can have those same search tools. And uh, if you put this on your smartphone, it'll see all the pictures that you have on your camera roll, and it will also uh, let you import from Facebook and Instagram and Flickr. So all of those will work as well. So you can have all the photos on your phone perfectly indexed and easy to find.
All right. Well, it looks like there's no more questions. Thank you guys so much for getting up and coming out. Uh, I hope you're excited by these new tools. I'll be back a little bit later this afternoon. I've got a class on formatting video for social media. So uh, feel free to come by to that if you guys have time. Thanks again. It, Rich, it looks like we do have a couple more questions. In the oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, they're not popping up for me. So if you want to go ahead and ask them, feel free. Absolutely. Um, we have a question here from Mark. Is the generated metadata stored in the photo or in a separate database? So the generated metadata, if you mean things like face tags or any of the other stuff, it's in a database, but you have the ability to write it to the photo so that other apps can see it. There's a command to write it to the files. And when you export, you have the ability to choose if you want it to go or not. So it's all in a database, which is why it searches so fast. So by putting into a database, we can get instant search results. But if we um, were only reading the files, that's why it would take a much longer time to find things. So it's in a database to make it searchable. And then you choose if it gets embedded into the files or not. Excellent. Thank you. Another one from Mel. Yep. What happens if you detach a hard drive? Do the images not appear in Mylio anymore? Sure. So what Mylio Photos does is it creates a thumbnail, which is the grid view. It creates an optimized image, which is a five by seven small DNG file that's fully editable. So when I have Mylio Photos Plus, uh, I have half a million photos on my phone, half a million photos on my tablet. Uh, those are all optimized images, and they're about 5% the size of the original, but it's what you need for everyday use, like a basic print, social media, or anything else. So if the hard drive isn't plugged in, you still have those on your internal drive. So like in my case, that half a million photos takes up about 280 gigabytes of disk space to have them as optimized images, which is a piece of cake. Uh, so you could do that and you already have those, but if you need to do the full quality files for exporting, then you have to have the drive attached. Or if you're with Mylio Photos Plus, it could be attached to one of your devices and you click a button and it will go and grab it and download it. But with Mylio Photos, uh, if you want to work with the full quality files, the drive has to be attached. That's the free version of the product. But if the drive isn't attached, you can still work and browse and organize and search and find things. And you'll have that high resolution optimized image, that five by seven inch uh, 300 PPI photo that you can use for any other purposes. And you can still uh, do all sorts of things like that. Make basic exports, share to social media, drop it in a slideshow, things like that. That's awesome. Uh, last question here from Larry. Uh, is it just one subscription per device? It is one prescription per per prescription <laughs> subscription per person. So nine ninety nine flat. Have as many devices as you want, but it's your account. So I wouldn't suggest adding a bunch of other people to it because you all see everything. But it's unlimited devices, unlimited storage because you're using your own local storage. If you want to have stuff in the cloud, it works with any S three provider or Google or anything else, and you have total control over what goes to the cloud. So you can set that up in your sync panel uh, and decide exactly what's gonna make it to the cloud and what's not. And uh, that gives you total control. I'll just take you real quickly to that. I should be able to show that real quick. Let me see here. I think I'm still sharing my screen, am I? Or did I stop? We need you to start the share again. Okay, let me find the Zoom controls. That's always the tricky part and share my screen. So what you can do under your devices panel is each of them can be set up precisely. So like, you know, this computer needs 16 photos. When I turn it on, we'll get it. But my iPad is set up to only have optimized images, which are those, you know, small DNGs. Uh, my iPhone has a little less than that. I just have the catalog in certain folders. And then you can go on your devices and go folder by folder and set the individual policies. So like if I said, oh, I, I want to absolutely positively make sure that my ebooks are on my iPad because it works with documents too. I could just come on over here to the iPad, locate it here in the list and click and say, oh yeah, I want those stored at original quality. And I could set a sync policy just like Dropbox. So you can remotely control how all your devices are syncing down to the folder level or even the image level uh, from one place. So you can have all your devices precisely synced. I just keep a drive plugged in called a travel drive, for example, it's just an SSD. And uh, as soon as I unplug it and walk out the door, it automatically has all of my full quality photos from the last three months. That's what the travel backup does. So if I'm on the road, I plug it in my laptop, it backs up my local photos. 
If I need to go and run to a client meeting, I grab it and unplug it. I automatically have the full quality photos with me on an SSD as a backup. Totally automated. So it's pretty insane the level of control you have over syncing. And I say that because I designed it that way. So I actually designed that feature because I got sick and tired of 321 backup and all the craziness. You can have as many devices plugged in as you want and precisely control how every single one is there. And the backup is fully automatic. You never have to click go or anything. As soon as your devices connect to an internet network, they start backing up. Cool. And can you name a destination? Yeah, right here. You just name the files. You just name it whatever you want. So you can do whatever you need to. Okay. And at any point in time, if you're on a device without the file, you can click a button and choose to download the original and it'll pull it off one of your other devices or if you put it in the cloud. And if you do decide to use cloud, it's up to you. Like I keep just the optimized images in the cloud and you can choose to encrypt so that it's encrypted to your device. But there's a lot more on Mylia Photos on their website. They have daily getting started or sorry, weekly getting started events and videos up there to help you up and running. Today was about the AI. But the benefits of the Mavio Photo Plus is that ability to have everything automatically backed up to your vaults or your protection drives, and then use that space saver technology to keep everything with you on your laptop, your phone, and your tablet. So when I go travel, I no longer have to carry all these portable drives with me. I just take one little backup SSD, but I can still access my entire photo library from anywhere in the world. Cool. I think we're out of time. I hope you guys enjoy your next classes. Thanks so much for coming out.